Welcome, Sonia. Hi, thank you. I love your boots. Thank you. So I discovered you through a person that's been showing up at our events in New York, a guy that runs the NIMBY blog. Oh, Nikolai. Nikolai. I don't know if you remember Nikolai, but he's a total character, wonderful kid, um, just pushing the envelope in a whole new way. And he told me about you, and then I started reading up on you. I haven't been hanging around the Bay Area, and I was like, I just got to meet this woman. It's <laughs> totally a radical in a whole new and different way, a very refreshing way. But I sent you this. Um, this is April 26, 1992. I wrote an article when I used to write for print. I wrote a column called Living in the Bay Area, and I wrote about the farmer's market. And it's NIMBYism rears its head as Bernal Heights project disrupted. And we all want NIMBYs are, right? Um, and by the way, YIMBY means yes, yes in, in my, my backyard. Yeah. So you passionately care about affordable housing, but you actually are out there advocating that this stuff get built. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, affordability, a lot, a lot of times when we say affordable housing, what we mean is subsidized housing. But the vast majority of low and middle income Americans do not live in subsidized housing. You know, subsidized housing is a solution for a very small number of people. Most of us live in places that are quote unquote naturally affordable. You know, either because they were sort of built cheaply and they're new, or they were built for rich people 100 years ago and now they're old. I mean, there's no way to accommodate a lot of people in your metro area without a lot of housing. And we just have been underbuilding here for so long that I feel like anything is better than nothing. Um, because I saw it, I live in West Oakland, and every house or apartment building, condo, whatever, that they don't build in the mission is a high-income person moving to West Oakland, driving up rents. So, so the key is to build more housing. And yeah, anything is better than nothing. And tell me this, uh, people here come from all over and they come to San Francisco and it seems very dense and seems <laughs> overbuilt, and the argument that you could possibly find more room to build housing, is that a myth? Oh yeah, you can always find room. I mean, Tokyo keeps building housing and they have ostensibly even less land than us. It is true, like if you're gonna build something in San Francisco, you can't build on green fields. And actually throughout California in the 70s, Californians made a decision that they don't wanna build on green fields. And we made it harder to build on formerly agricultural land um, to protect open spaces. And that's nice, that's probably a good idea. But what it means is that you have to be prepared for one-story commercial to be torn down, or parking lots, or multi-story parking garages, you know, or disused industrial. So that's not a bad thing. Getting rid of some of that and building some housing seems like, why don't we just do that? Yeah, and I mean, in some places in San Francisco we are. There's many more places we could. Um, the reason why not, of course, is that, you know, with any status quo, there are people that are invested in it. You know, and it's everything from, I use that lot for a dog run. You know, don't build housing there. Or so we don't give up a dog run to build 100 units of housing. That seems like we have our priorities screwed up. And I know the dog lovers yeah. will email me. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a roach. But um, that, that is the trade-off sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing in San Francisco. I remember when I was a journalist here once, I had a friend in Mill Valley who tried to convert a garage to a second unit. And he had to get an EA, EIR, which is an environmental impact review. And yet they built the industrial uh, this huge industrial park in Contra Costa County and there was no EIR. I mean, so it's inconsistent as well. Yeah, he should have done it illegally. Yeah, honestly. Really exactly. Um, I want to get to how you got here, but I also am just so fascinated about your courage. Um, you are suing cities like Lafayette, which by the way, Lafayette is a very affluent community to the east of San Francisco. Uh, you're, you're suing Lafayette and some other high-end cities. So this shows your, your, your kind of objective view across the board. Uh, tell us about those things. Um, and Berkeley you're suing. Uh, we'll see about Berkeley. They might, they might not be necessary. Um, Ber I'm so excited about this Berkeley thing. Um, yeah, so it turns out that actually we have a very strong state law, if you use it, called the Housing Accountability Act. And it was written in 1982. Um, it says that if you propose a project that's within the zoning, within the general plan, that the city doesn't have the discretion to turn it down. Um, now, and that's how it works basically everywhere else in the United States. Normally, 
you know, if you're within your zoning, you just go right to the building inspections. You don't have to ask for permission again. Um, but in California, cities regularly ignore it. And it's really, I mean, any citizen can sue to enforce the law, but normally that never happens. What any citizen is going to be invested or, you know, care. Um, and developers don't sue to enforce their rights because developers are not in the business of filing lawsuits. You know, like, you might have a case that you'll win, but it'll take three years and a quarter of a million dollars. Like, you don't raise money from investors to sue people. You raise money from investors, you know, to build housing. And so most of the time, they just walk away, or maybe they'll try to negotiate a smaller project. So you're like this citizen brigade that's going out suing these yeah. affluent communities. Because the idea is that, hey, San Francisco, you build it, Lafayette, you build it. If we all build a little. And I think this gets to the heart. And it's why I wanted Sandra here, because these issues of income equality and economics, you know, we talk about, we wring our hands, oh, but, you know, there are people out there actually trying to do something, which is why I like this woman. <laughs> and it may not be perfect, but you're doing something. Let's talk about another one I love. Uh, you've infiltrated the Sierra Club. So at the other extreme, you've decided to take the Sierra Club on their hypocrisy. Yeah, it was, well, infiltrate makes it sound like it was secret, but everything about this was completely public. You know, every year they elect executive directors, and they're doing it again. So if anybody wants to run, just get in touch with What's me. What's the criteria? They have to live in San Francisco? You have to live in San Francisco, and you have to become a Sierra Club member by August 11th. So they have to sign up and be a member of the Sierra Club? It costs $15. Do we have a handheld for Sonia? Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, wait, there it goes. Hey. We're back. Um, yeah, so we, yeah, so Sierra Club's local, the local San Francisco uh, group, um, their mission statement includes support for compact development, right? And it's part of what I was talking about before, that the Sierra Club is interested in maintaining open spaces and, you know, nature. But if you have a growing population and you're not going to build on top of nature, you have to build infill. You, you know, you have to cover up those dog runs and parking lots in your city. Um, and they were issuing resolutions against height limit increases you know, which is directly contrary to their mission. Uh, so, you know, we ran, we had a candidate and it turned out there were some other people that were running also that agreed with us. We ran this slate. I signed up 200 new people. Normally- so You're only, filling the ranks of Sierra Club, but with people that may represent yeah. a different point of view. Yeah, and Sierra Club, the office- they were excited about you. They loved it. They were like, this is great. You guys raised like $6,000 for us, you know. But so the electeds didn't love it. The staff people loved it. Um, yeah, so normally turnout for those races is less than 400 people. So it's people. an inside job. Well, turnout that, because it was so public and in the papers, turnout for that election was 800 people. Wow. So all our 200 people voted, but we were destroyed. You got swarmed. But we're doing it again because it really did help. So you I live mean, in San Francisco, just yeah. living, breathing person? Yeah, or, any yeah. warm body. That's the thing about politics. Any warm body is 100% qualified to, be, to participate. Yeah. It's great. It's so great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I love what you're doing. You know what I miss about uh, what you're doing? I mean, I wish I was still writing for the local papers so I could write about you all the time. <laughs> You know, I wish I could go on too, but we don't have a lot of time. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you for coming. Yeah, thanks for having and, me. And join the Sierra Club in San Francisco so the Citizen Brigade here can go get out the vote. So the Sierra Club, you know, it's like everything now. We're for ethnic diversity, but the executive team is all white guys like me. You know, we're for this, we're for that. But when it comes down to it, people don't execute in what they say they're for, and you're doing it and forcing people to face up to that. So keep up the great work. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks.